Hey folks, how are we going? Now, I'm about to plant a ballerina apple and you've seen me plant some already over there and over here. Now, I decided to plant one more in this garden bed here because I'm more of that this aesthetic type, the balancing type. But as I started to dig, let's come over here. Let's talk about it over here, come. So over this way. See these white pebbles? Aren't they great? They're a beautiful feature, you know, a bit of a architectural additive. I suppose, is that what you call it, to your landscape gardens? We've got a nice big boulder here. Dioides growing and grasses everywhere. Well, I started to dig here. I moved the pebbles out. We're about 150 mil, 200 mil deep in pebbles, white pebbles, beautiful conifers. And you wonder why they suffer sometimes. Well, I'll tell you why they suffer, one example of why they suffer, and that's because of the black polyurethane plastic. See down there? Look at the soil underneath. I just cut this up with the, the shovel to get underneath there. And we've got sandy loam over here, but that is as dry as a bone. And you can see these roots, they're the conifer roots. Very shallow because they're coming up to find some moisture in search of moisture and they can't get it. Now we talk about plastic or lining your garden beds with a, a plastic or a liner or a weed mat of some sort. This is an example of what solid plastic can do to your garden. You may see or hear about uh, monoculture, you know, farming where they have the one variety of plants and they line the entire field or row with a black plastic and punch a hole every 20 or 30 centimetres and plant their seedlings in there. They've got their reasons why they do that, but that's monoculture gardening. That's, that's a totally different concept as to what you want to do in your own garden bed. You don't want to be putting plastic down. The, the, the simplest reason why is because you're killing off the soil, the microbes in the soil, the living organisms that live in your soil are struggling. It suffocates, it becomes inert, it becomes dead. Look at that, it's lifeless. It's just like beach sand at the moment. So I've got to dig this out and replace it with some composted soil, then plant my tree in there. Now, if you're still in, insisting on putting plastic down, if you're building a raised garden, but it's fine. Like I've done over there in my little veggie garden, 400 high, I lay the plastic down to suffocate the weeds. I have no intention of growing anything within the soil underneath the plastic, but rather on top. And that's what we call a raised garden bed. Now, if you still need to put plastic down for whatever the reason, avoid the solid plastic. I've just seen over here in this garden bed, and follow me on this one, we've got different types of plastic or weed mat, you can call them a weed mat, which is a woven plastic, which allows moisture to get through, but really slows down the development of weeds uh, underneath that. And this is what's in here. Now, I didn't lay it, that's how I acquired the garden bed with the plastic, but no plants in it, everything was dead. I had since gone along and punched extra holes in it, and just over here is the weed mat, so when you come over, you'll see the weed mat is here exposed, and what happened here, the owners previously, love them to death, lovely people, but they buried a lot of topsoil or fill under here and covered it over with plastic. And that's fine if you're not going to grow anything, but I needed to grow something in here. So I've planted some proteas, leucospermums, emu bush over here. We've got a pig face growing in here, salt bush. We've got lavenders, sea lavenders growing, all sorts. But I've gone along and cut holes everywhere in the plastic so water can penetrate a lot quicker. This is the plastic here. Have a look at it here. That's it there. And see, weeds still come through, but I've gone along and punched little holes like that so the water can get through. And that's what you've got to do with the plastic if you wanted to keep your soil alive. If you want to keep your soil alive, you don't want to cover it over. Otherwise, it becomes inert, dead, and it won't grow. Now, the other one you can use as well is called mulch mat. Now, that's a material, it's a fibre where you can lay down and it allows water to penetrate through quite freely. But it's, it's like, let's call it like a super strong tissue piece of tissue, a large layer of it. So weeds can't push through from underneath, but they will always grow on top. And I've actually got weeds all over this garden bed. Arenaria is growing even there. They've, they've come back to life. I love this. There's a little ground cover here. It was almost went to heaven about nine months ago from the hot weather, but it's come back. So here, have a look at this. I've just pulled this weed out. That's growing on top of the plastic. More weeds on top of the plastic. They, so you can easily weed your garden bed because it's just very shallow rooted. But the last thing you want to see happening is the weeds growing from underneath the plastic and through it. And if they interlock their roots into the woven mat that you have, you're in trouble. So if you need to cover your garden bed for whatever the reason and you're insisting on putting something down, at least use something that's biodegradable like a mulch mat and then 
if that's not good enough for you, then only use a weed mat. Don't go with a solid polyurethane plastic because you'll kill the earth, your plants will struggle, and the hardest part is you can't even water them or fertilise them properly. So avoid all that, and that's what I've got to do over here now. I've got to rip that plastic out. Look at this. I cannot get this roots. I'm not going to get the roots in here. Look at this, folks. There's roots here. There, look at that. I've already damaged it a bit. And the, there's roots just below there. There's roots over here. I can't dig here. I don't want to cut these roots. It's bad enough that these things go backwards on their own. You know, we get a bit of dieback canker developing. And it's still, I've just finished cutting some of it out. Look at it. It's on the ground here. I've been cutting out. So whenever we walk past the conifer hedge, we do a couple of prunes. There's still more dying off. Actually, no, I can't even reach up there. That's why. Little shorty, aren't I? <laughs> All right, so what I'm going to do here, Rather than planting it down deep below, let me get the tree. If you're wondering why it's so wet, I'll give you one guess. <laughs> it's been raining. It's going to sit here, above ground. So there's a big square hole here, 30 centimetres by 30 centimetres. I'm going to just fill it up with soil at this level here and basically top it up to the top of these pebbles. So it'll grow in this above ground soil. And if it is happy, it'll grow its roots down below. And by having this cut out here, at least I can be conscious of it and I can actually irrigate it and water it in and hopefully get the moisture to penetrate through down deep below. So we're gonna do that now, get some soil. This ain't the right shovel, but we'll give it a go. Actually, no, we'll push a barrow through here. Hey, Cara, you wanna help me? Obviously not. Just top it up, and not just there, all the way around. And I'm not going to put the pebbles back over the top, I'm going to leave it exposed. I might bring in some mulch to cover it up. There we are. And there's our ballerina apple. Now, if you want to use any sort of weed mat, make sure it's a mulch mat or a weed mat, but not a plastic. And once you finish planting, always give them a good feed with our EcoBoost and Liquid Gold. That's the best way to get them kick-started in the root system to grow big, strong and healthy. And hopefully if they're a fruiting plant, you get lots of strong flowers and fruit too. Lots of great deals on our website. That's facilitiesgarden.com. See you next time. Maresi.